time for another Amazon special. That's right, Sound Extreme ST2500.2 claims 5,000 watts of two channel power. And according to the reviewers, yeah, you may not get that much power. <laughs> But we're going to find out. But before we do that, let's see what somebody has to say. Thanks, Big D. This is Dick Riculous. They're just plain out lying to you, lying to you, lying to you. We are here and we're going to report it because that's what we do. Here's one you may not have heard of. Sound Extreme. This is a 5K. <laughs> right. 5,000 watts max. The ST2500.2 two-channel amplifier, two-ohm stable. This thing is big. You can see it here on top of the quad box. It's wider than the quad box. So let's uh, open this up, see what it's all about, and we'll test it out on the dyno and see how much power it really does. All right, right up front here is the manual. You can see they've got several different um, models, 1600, 2000, 5000, et cetera, et cetera, up to a five channel. Let's find out in here what the ratings are, if they have anything other than max. And it's just maximum power output, unfortunately. There's our ST2500.2. Yeah, those numbers are useless because you can see right here, it has an 80 amp fuse, supposedly a class AB amp. I'm gonna venture to say it might do 500 watts, maybe 600. What do you guys think? So here we have the base remote and the cable. Looks like it's attached. It feels like it's a metal um, remote and it is. No clip light, but it is metal. Potentiometer is not bad, it's a little small, but you cannot detach this, you can see. And it uses the RJ11 style connector, not the wider one. But if it doesn't have a clip light, or voltage or anything like that. It doesn't need all the other pins that the RJ45 gives you. Here on one end of the amp, you can see the line inputs, the power protect, gain, base boost, zero to 12 dB, on or off, high pass filter, crossover, so it can either be high pass, flat, or low pass. There's a remote base control and a line output if you wanna daisy chain the signal to another amplifier. On the power side, we have the angled terminals, which we hate. Those look like maybe four gauge. There's the 80 amp fuse, the maxi style fuse. And the two channel output, which it can be bridged, which is the left positive and right negative. As far as dimensions go, this amp is relatively large, 24 inches long by 9.5 inches wide. So it has a very big footprint for the heights about 2.5 inches or 65 millimeters. Weight wise, it's actually a lot heavier than I thought it would be. Seems to be a little bit thicker uh, aluminum than they typically use on these super cheap amps. At the time of the video when I bought this, this was only 120 bucks, I think, from Amazon Prime, free shipping. So uh, yeah, I mean, we don't expect much, but to see an amp this big, <laughs> And I uh, had somebody recommend it to me. And I'm like, yeah, that looks pretty interesting. I think people might want to see how much true power a 5,000 watt max amp on Amazon that says it's, uh, you know, 120 bucks. It's impressive the size, at least. You show your friends and say, look, I got a 5,000 watt amp. And I'm putting out, you know, 300 watts. But um, that's why we have the dyno here. We can test out things and find out what the true power is. So what do you say we get it wired up and we'll try it out? I think that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that earlier? Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch, smash me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the Dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. Here we have the amp hooked up with four gauge power and ground. Let's power it up. You can see the X there on the outside emblem as well as the power light comes on. 
Now, first up, we're going to do the stereo test, testing both channels. Let's do four ohms first, rated 1250 watts times two with an 80 amp fuse. Certified, we get 179 and 178. I mean, you really didn't expect more, did you? <laughs> Let's try uncertified up to clipping. And we're using the 40 hertz tone here. And we got 185 and 187 at 14.26. So very much shy of the quote unquote rated power. Dynamically, here you can see the 40 hertz burst tone. We got a little bit over 180 watts per channel. 180 and 182 at 14.26. What about that efficiency? This is a class AB amp, 65% efficient at four ohm stereo. Now let's reset the dyno for two ohm stereo. The amp is rated 2,500 watts by two. We know it's a lie. Let's see what we get. 284 and 291. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Apparently, Sound Extreme and their ratings think this is a Mickey Mouse program. Well, we're going to show you what these amps really do. Let's try it uncertified up to clipping at 2 ohms, almost 300 watts per channel, 293 and 297, right at 14.2 volts. Let's reset the dyno here for the dynamic test at 40 hertz, both channels driven, pulse tone going into the amplifier. 274 and 282 right at 14.1. Now let's check that efficiency at two ohms, 55%. Yep. Now let's hook the amp up mono. So we'll bridge the channels and test it at four ohms. It's rated 5,000 watts. That is a max rating. We know with the 80 amp fuse, it's never gonna do it. You can see here we use left positive and right negative to bridge the amp. Certified four ohms. 594 watts at 14 and a half volts. So plenty of voltage, just under 600 watts. It actually did better than I kind of estimated in my head. I thought around 500 watts is what we would get. But still, it's abysmal when you think you're getting a 5,000 watt amp. You don't know any better. Uncertified 616, 14 and a half volts. Then we'll try the dynamic test here and just realize that we're going to be disappointed. 587, yep, that's where it's going to stay. 587 at 14 and a half volts. Efficiency wise, 56% at four ohms bridge mono. As far as the results, you guys just saw most of the test. And yep, that's pretty abysmal according to the ratings. We'll give it a thumbs down because there's no way that uh, they should be able to sell this with a 5,000 watt number on it. What's inside next? Is it a surprise? Probably not, but let's turn it over. This amp is almost two feet long or right at two feet long. And here we go. Check out the inside. Class AB typical here. You can see, let's check out the filter caps for the rails, 3300 microfarad, 63 volts, Yuscon. And then for the input filtering, 2200 microfarad, 25 volt, these are 105 degrees Celsius caps, which was uh, very interesting, honestly. Now you might notice that if you split this amp right down the middle, kind of looks like a dual mono amp. What do you say? It's pretty close to it. There's one thing that we did notice though. It only has one chip for the pulse width modulation for the power supply. So it's not a true dual mono, but if you split the amp right down the middle, mostly mirrored components, so very interesting. I know you guys don't care about that. You just want to know, do it bump dough? Have this huge, not 5,000 watt ST2500.2 by Sound Extreme. We're going to try it out with a kicker quad box. Let's try it out. The quad box has two 2 ohm terminals with four 12 inch subs. So we're going to wire it at four ohms mono. All right, how about a little woofer test?
right, so as you could see, that 600 watts was enough to move those 412s, a very efficient box. Let's talk about the good stuff. The amp is inexpensive. At the time of this video, it's 120 bucks. You can impress your friends with a 5,000 watt amp. It includes a bass knob. It's almost a dual mono design. Now we go back to impress your friends. They're going to be pretty disappointed when they find out the real power output of this amp. So don't get too excited about that if you buy one of these. Things that could be better. The max power ratings and the 1% THD ratings are a joke. Class AB design, probably not the best for these cheap amps like this. We'd rather have a Class D design. Has a huge footprint, low efficiency, and the base knob doesn't have any clip lights or anything. But for 120 bucks, what do you expect? I mean, really? So there you have it. The test of the Sound Extreme ST 2500.2 from Amazon for $120 and it performed about as well as we expected it would. It's just we wanted to show you guys what you should expect when you buy an amp like this. You're not getting 5,000 watts. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Sound Extreme 5K, let's try two ohms bridge mono, 40 hertz, Amp is not rated to handle anything below four ohms bridged, but we're gonna try it anyway. So here we go, 40 hertz, up to 1% THD. All right, 740 watts, right at 14.44. 122 amps and we didn't blow that 80 amp fuse. Sound extreme 5K. Let's try two ohm dynamic burst bridge mono. Amp is not rated to handle 2 ohm bridge mono, which is 1 ohm per stereo channel, but we're going to try it. 40 hertz burst. Here we go. Seven hundred forty watts at fourteen point four. Look at the current. That's a burst current. It's one hundred and fifty amps, and it's got an eighty amp fuse. That's amazing.